Hello everyone, this is Bentley out in Kent, Washington, and today we're going to do a little lesson on algae, how to control it, why you're getting it, and if you do have an algae problem, how to fight it. Uh, this is going to be a really quick tutorial, so if you want something super in-depth after this video, after you've watched it through, go down in the comments and let me know what you would like to see. If you want just all algae overall, maybe you want some more in-depth about how to use CO2, or just like how do I fight pesky algae, X, whether it's blackbeard algae, hair algae, let me know. Okay? So let's start with the basics. Algae is a single cell organism. It's very simple. So anytime you have an imbalance of some form, whether that's light, nutrients, or most importantly, your feeding schedule of your fish, if there's too much of one thing, algae is going to latch onto that and it's going to start growing. So there's lots of ways that we can fight this. Number one, is the approach that we tank when we uh, that we take when we first set up a tank. Number two, after the fact, is how we identify the problem early and make shifts to fix it before it becomes really out of hand. On a three, of course, um, would be creating proactive measures so that we see almost no algae start in the first place. Now, algae is not a bad thing. If you look here, even in this glass, there's little specks of algae on it. I, usually on my side and rear glass, I don't care if there's a little bit of like glass type algae, some of the harder algae, but I don't want to see a ton of it. And I don't want to see it on my front glass when I'm going through and doing my maintenance. I will clean that off just because I like a nice clear panel in the front. But keep in mind, algae does suck nitrates out of the water, right? So your fish make waste and your beneficial bacteria turns that waste from ammonia to nitrite, from nitrite to nitrate, and plants and algae love nitrates. The easiest way to fight algae in the first place, plants. Lots of plants, especially fast-growing plants. Fast-growing plants are going to compete with that algae really hard and prevent it from getting nutrients. So let's identify some algaes. Here's one of the most common, which is green hair algae. You can see it's all over this tank. You'll also notice I have no plants in this tank. So it's very hard to fight algae in this thing. And I have plecos in here. Plecos are a little messy. They need extra food. It's just something I have to deal with in this tank. I purposely let this get a little ugly, but here's some just glass algae, which is green dust or green spot algae. This is usually easily dealt with by doing some small adjustments and just cleaning the glass when you do water changes. Here might be one of the harder ones, which is blackbeard algae. Um, it's these black tufts, they'll get in your plants, it can be really obnoxious. I deal with it in the guppy tank. The easiest way typically to deal with this is a chemical treatment using either hydrogen peroxide or liquid carbon. However, if you have lots of sensitive fish like little baby fish, you might not want to take that risk. Or you might have it down in the substrate, which makes it harder because it's hard to drain the water. So let's look at ways to fight this without living creatures. <laughs> Um, which I use living creatures at times, but you can have stuff like this. Notice how there's almost no water flow in this tank, and I've got hair algae mixed in that duckweed. Still water makes it much easier for algae to grow. So we can get water movement. We can also use CO2. You can use liquid carbon, but I personally prefer pressurized CO2 in tanks where I'm going to grow a lot of plants. You'll see me adjusting my, my rate here, but... Um, this is pretty simple, right? Just CO2 in a regulator. This is a super nice regulator. You don't have to go this crazy, but uh, because this feeds three different tanks in my in my fish room. But CO2 makes plants accelerate their growth. They can pull more and more nutrients in, which makes them diff makes it harder for the algae to fight them. And then here's just a CO2 diffuser. I like atomic diffusers or inline reactors, depending on what I have in my setup. You can use the ceramic discs, but they tend to be a little less efficient. Um, and then while we look at the plants for profit tank, I'll, I'll go over some, some, I guess you'd say, preventative and how to fix it long term. So let's say we're setting up a tank brand new, okay? We're going to set a nice planter tank up. We're going to put a good number of plants in there. When you first set the tank up, don't dose a lot of nutrients right away. And if you can, dim your light. So plants need a little while to settle into a new water system, grow roots, um, start adjusting to the water. So during that time, really limit the amount of nutrients you put into the water and limit the amount of light. So if you have a dimmable light, dim it down to 50% to start. Same with your nutrients, dose 50%. Let that wait for a week, week and a half, maybe two weeks if you don't use CO2. Get them settled in. 
then up it. So now you can, they're probably settled in, especially if you've seen new growth in a good number of your plants. Now up your light to 75% and go to your full nutrient dose or 75%. Depends on, on, depends on your tank and your system. If you're only seeing a few plants grow in, just up that dose a little bit. Go to 75%. So like in a 40-gallon tank, you would do dosing 30 gallons worth of water and nutrients. And then wait another like two weeks or so, especially if you don't have CO2. Now, if you start seeing all the plants getting new growth and looking good, you're not seeing any issues and deficiencies. If you see deficiencies, add some extra efforts. That's fine. Now we can start dialing up the light all the way to maximum and going to full nutrient doses. This prevents the algae from getting a chance to settle in in the first place. Of course, CO2 helps. But if you notice, like maybe you've got a couple still spots, and even in this tank, there's little bits of algae here and there because there's areas where I don't have enough flow. Adjust your water flow. Maybe that means adding an extra sponge filter or a power head or um, a little circulation pump, whatever you can to add that little bit of water flow because that's one of the other things that really fights algae well. Just enough water flow to push everything around so that no, like if you dose nutrients, they're not sitting in one spot or the plants are moving so they're not constantly having a massive bombardment of light on one set of leaves. If they haven't settled in, that's going to inhibit your algae. The biggest thing for algae, if you have algae now, and I, it, this is my personal problem that I tend to deal with. I will be really heavy handed with feeding sometimes. When you feed too much food and your fish aren't eating enough of it or they're producing extra waste, though most of our foods have phosphates in them. They're usually a filler, but there's all sorts of phosphates in them. And algae really dominates on phosphates where plants does not. So if you're starting to get hair algae, for example, or like my glass where you saw that glass is all green, no, tons and tons of ugly algae all over the place have your feeding so if you're feeding every day feed every other day maybe you have baby fish you really need to make sure they get food every day um just half the amount you feed at each feeding really dial back your feeding and watch and if you see that algae start to creep away keep doing that until you can get rid of most of it and for hair algae stuff like that remove the algae that you have in there in the first place go in reach in. don't be afraid to get your hands wet get your arms in there pull that algae out carefully get it off of your hardscape and your plants and the filters wherever it's stuck to and then dial back that feeding remove a lot of those phosphates and you probably will see it stop growing and then eventually go away that's the basics guys if you want more details again throw a comment down there. Let me know. If you like this video, like it. If you'd like to hear more, I'm, I'm definitely willing to do more and do something a little long-term. I just have a really busy weekend. Uh, so let me know in the comments. And as always, guys, stay awesome.